furniture, musical instruments, functional art, beautiful decoration. These pieces, and others like them, are crafted in wood by master woodworkers who live here in Santa Cruz County and on the Central Coast. In this series, we meet some of these craftsmen and explore the paths they took to develop their talents. We will look at examples of their work. We will discover what and who inspired them. Please join us as we enter their workshops and watch them demonstrate the skills and the techniques they use in creating their signature pieces. Hello, this is John Hall welcoming you to Woodworks. Today's programme is a continuation of our how-to series. Last month we showed you how to make a trestle table. This month we're going to show you how to make a box. And to do that we're joined by Timothy Lydgate, master box maker here at his workshop on the outskirts of Coralitos. Today we're going to build a box out of two woods, maple and walnut. And it's a nice uh, color contrast. The walnut's kind of a darkish brown and the maple's quite white cream colored. So I think they go well together graphically. And we're going to start with this piece of walnut. And uh, I've milled this up into strips that are going to be the side of the box. This is the finished box. And we're going to do it step by step. And what I'm talking about here is these sides. You can see the thickness is the same in my camera. And we're just going to wrap it around like this, and that's going to be our box. So the very first step, you can see there's a bottom, and the bottom has actually been set into the sides of the box. It's called a rabbit in woodworking, R-A-B-B-E-T. And the first thing we're going to do is cut that little trench, and I'll show you how that's done. So I'm going to lower my blade to the thickness that I think the bottom is going to be. I just bend down here and take a look at when the tip of the blade gets to the height that I want it. This can be rough dimensions because we're going to sand this all down when we're done. So then you bring your fence over and you line up your stock. And what I'm going to do, instead of using a router, I'm just going to pass this piece of wood over the table saw blade a number of times until I get the width that I want for my rabbit, for my cut. Uh, you'll notice I put on a dust mask. First rule of thumb, over time, breathing a lot of these dust is not good for human lungs. Second thing is some sort of eye protection. I need glasses, so I use these fairly heavy-duty ones, and it kills two birds with one stone. But you can have a face mask like this that some people wear. You can have a simple... Uh, pair of protective goggles, but you should have something covering your, covering your uh, eyes at least. Some people like to cover their whole face. And then as far as control of the blade, uh, you will notice I use this funny looking piece of wood which I cut myself, just a piece of quarter inch plywood that I shaped so that it allows me to push the wood through the saw. And that's the first thing you want to do is keep your fingers as far away from the saw blade as you can. So when you're pushing with a, with a push stick, it leaves you a, quite a bit of distance between your fingers and the blade. The other thing that I do is, it's kind of hard to see, but when I run my hand along this fence, I always hook a couple of fingers off to the side of the fence so that even if something scared me or I jumped, there isn't any way I could get to that saw blade. I'm physically barred from ever touching that blade. So I feel a certain degree of safety knowing that. I'm holding on tight, so even if something breaks loose or goes flying, I'm not going to make that mistake of jerking and suddenly pushing myself into the blade. And here's a, here's a finished piece that I've already cut the rabbit in. And you can see it's a kind of a trench in the bottom of the box. And it goes about halfway through the box, through the thickness of the side. And it goes into the box as deep as the bottom is going to be. So you can kind of see how that fits in. So that's step one. We've cut our rabbit. Now we're going to turn this piece of wood 
into the four sides of the box. I'm a big fan of marking up your stock. So you've got four pieces. It's kind of hard to see the pencil lines unless you're up close. And I'm going to mark them up front, right, left, and back. So I'm going to make this one the front. This is going to be the right. That's the back. And that's the left. That way, when the box is finished, any features in the grain are going to run right around the box, and there won't be any inconsistencies. Okay, now you got four pieces marked front, back, right, and left, and that's going to be the basic box. Now, since we're going to cut the miter, the miter is a 45 degree angle. And it points out. That's the cut you're going to want to make. And then the four sides are going to fit together quite neatly. So you'll see when we put the stock up here, we can raise the blade as high as we want. So we come right up above the level. So we're going to put the stock here. And as long as you hold tight, um, it's not going to go anywhere. It's and you're just going to very slowly pass it right along the blade and it's going to generate this perfect 45 degree angle which is what we're looking for and on the first pass we're going to cut one side of each piece one side of each of these four and then we'll measure exactly in terms of length and width to figure out where the second cut's going to be but the first cut is just uh, get it in there I'm going to mark seven inches on this and I'm going to scribe it with a square. And this is just for visual reference. The table saw is going to cut everything square. So I got one of each of these marked. So now we're going to cut the, the critical miters and get exactly the length that we want. Blades at the right height. So I've run my first pass through and it was a little short, so I just have a teeny weeny bit. And one of the challenges in this kind of work is you, you want to cut a matching pair. The front and the back of the box are going to be exactly the same size and the two sides are going to be the same size. So if you get one too short, then you've got to cut the other one again. And then if that's too short, you've got to cut the other one and pretty soon your stock is half gone. So I take very, very small, when I get close, I take very, very small bits off until I get to where I'm trying to get. And then I draw it back and just move it a hair. So now we have this side cut to the size we want. And we're going to match it. And that's how we're going to make sure that the other piece is the same size. So one thing I do, there's a side with the rabbit and then there's the top side. I make sure that these two are flipped. I don't know what the proper term is for that. And that way, if there's any imprecision in the milling, it's going to be balanced because one's this way and one's that way. So if some little angle were a bit off, putting these two that way is going to balance it out. Then I just put my finger right at the edge. I use this finger usually. And that keeps these aligned perfectly. The edges of that miter, of the two pieces are aligned perfectly. And then I hold it against the fence. And then I use this hand to bring it out to the place I want it to be. And again, I'll come close till it looks like, okay, it's not going to be exact, but it's going to be in the ballpark. A little more. And that's getting real close. And at this point, I use my finger, your fingernail, and you can feel if there's a little bit it's not quite ready. So now it's just a hair that's going to come off. But you can't really see either side of that. What you're seeing is the point where the two miters meet. So that means they're the same length. So the next stage is to make the lid of the box. And in this case, as you can see from the finished product, it's got a center panel 
and it's framed by a contrasting wood. The center panel is the walnut, and we've used maple for the contrast. So here's another example of a miter joint around these four corners. So here's my center panel, which I've already cut and is already made to size. And these are the bits in the frame, which again I milled out of a piece of four-quarter maple. It's got some little bit of nice figure to it that's going to show up well when we get it polished and sanded and oiled. I've marked on each piece which it is, so I don't get confused about either right or left or top or bottom. Again, it allows the grain to be consistent. Set the blade to the thickness we want. Which is I'm going to cut one miter for each piece, and then we'll go back and we'll get the size exactly the place we want it to be. Now comes the fun part, which is fitting these miters around this center panel. So what I like to do is set two of these miters the way they're supposed to be, right, pointing into that edge, and then I hold them tight and I take a sharp pencil and I just scribe a little line where that other cut is supposed to be. Pencil line has some thickness itself, and the point of the pencil probably didn't get right into where that wood was meeting. So when I cut it, I'm going to actually remove this whole pencil line. At some point, the piece gets too short to have a really solid foundation here. So it gets shorter, take another piece of wood. It can be a scrap off your table saw. It can be a piece of what you're working with, and put that as an anchor and that becomes the fence and you can extend it out till it gets close and then you can put this piece against it and as long as you've selected a nice straight piece of wood that's going to help you out and then it's got support right right down to the blade. So. Now we're going to fit these and see how close we came. Trying to move these, you'll, you'll feel when the miter hits the place it's supposed to be holds pretty tight to itself. And what I like to do is hold the finished piece up against the light. You can really see if there's a crack, if there's a little extra space. And you've got to remember, too, the glue actually takes up a little bit of room. So you want to leave enough room for that. Here's our finished box parts, the four sides. We've got the mitered. We've got the size correct. We've got our rabbit cut in them. And they've been run over the belt sander, 120 grit belt sander, so there's a reasonably smooth surface here. Now we're going to glue these four sides together, but before we do that we're going to pick, we're going to put a little bit of wax on the insides of these faces. And there's a number of reasons for that. Number one, it finishes the wood off nicely. And number two, when we glue it, if any glue squeezes through the seam and gets on the inside of the box, we're going to be able to peel it off with a chisel because the glue is not going to want to stick to the wax. The goal is really to uh, coat it so that any glue that squeezes out during the gluing is easy to, re easy to remove. That's the main reason. I'll just take a piece of paper towel and just wipe this right back off. To assemble the rest of the box, I'm going to use epoxy. And I like to use a five minute epoxy because it speeds up my process quite a bit. I'm going to paint all the surfaces. Very thin layer, but enough to fill the pores. You don't want, if you look at it in the reflection, you don't want to be seeing any wood pores. You want to see a nice sheen of glue. All right, now we have four pieces painted with their glue. So I'm going to take strips of one inch masking tape. That's front, and here's back. I'm going to take the piece on the back. I'm going to apply the masking tape so that half of it's left over. Fold it under like that so it's going to cover that seam completely. Find my right hand piece and then fit it right in. Give it a little bit of a squeeze. You can see some glue coming out the top. 
And again, if you put your fingers right here and push both pieces, they come to a natural point. And I just bring the tape around. If we cut our miters right, this is going to be a perfect square, and it's going to want to stay together. It's the seams are going to want to fit together and hold in one place without any wiggling. So I'm going to tape just a simple web clamp, set it loose, and then I make sure it's at the same height all the way around so it's not exerting any forces that are going to twist the box or cant the box at all. And then just tighten it up. And I get it kind of uh, loose tight. And then I double check to make sure that the top of the box is all on the same plane. In this case, this one is ridden up a little bit, so you just kind of get it back. And again, you're wanting these two edges to be right at the same level. And then once you're sure it's the way it wants to be, give it one more little screw. And with all clamping procedures, I think a lot of people tend to put clamps on way too hard. If it's not cut properly, clamping it to force into position is basically not going to work. So now I'm going to take a chisel and I'm just going to peel the excess glue off. So I'm going to peel it off the top edges. And then the final step is this uh, little bead of glue that's on the inside. It's really just peeling it out and as you can see if I reach in with my fingers I can just kind of peel it off. It pulls right out. Now we're going to make the bottom of our box. Remember when we cut these rabbits, the intention was a piece of wood was going to slip right in and fill in that space, and that's going to be the bottom of the box. I milled up these same two woods, a couple of slabs of walnut, and I pulled off my eight-quarter piece and a narrower stripe of maple, same thickness. I'm going to laminate these three pieces together. You want to make sure that you're building a piece that's slightly larger than the place it has to fit. Because again, you'll trim it down after it's been glued. So now we're going to glue together the bottom of the box and what I call the lifter. And they've already been milled, so here they are. Pretty much set up and ready to go. There's a couple of steps involved when you're laminating together relatively thin pieces of wood. Um, first thing you got to do is tape them together so that they stay put. And I do that in, in two stages. The first thing I do is just put a little piece over the top to keep them together and, and then I go over to my tape dispenser and I just peel off a piece of one inch tape that's about the length of my glue seam and I fit the tape right over the middle of it. And then for each seam, I fold it back on itself and squeeze it together to make sure that the tape has the memory of exactly where that seam is. So I'll flop that down, make sure it's even. Just give it a little squeeze. And that makes everything stay in the right place when you get to the glue. Again, you want to paint both surfaces on a fairly thin layer. So now they're staying where they want to be, but you want to also keep them flat. So I have pieces of plywood. I just have a collection of quarter inch plywood, and that gives me a nice solid flat foundation. And just to make sure that this plywood is going to do its job, we're going to clamp it down to the plywood. I use these little one inch spring clamps. And again, I try to clamp every single piece so that nothing can ride up or move up. So once they're set up like that, they get clamped horizontally. And then tighten it just, just a hair. It's really not about cranking it down to make something go anywhere. You've already fitted everything. The lines are straight. It's taped together. It's on a flat surface. So all you're doing really is holding it in place. We've just come from gluing these bits together. We put together our box, the four sides of the box. We built the bottom. We glued the bottom into our nice little rabbit at the bottom of the box. We took our lid. 
center panel, framed it with the maple. And that's all nice and tight. It fits pretty well. So now we're going to cut the splines. Splines are these contrasting color bits here. And they're basically a slice right through the wood like that. So there's a triangle of wood that's buried in there. And it's going to help hold together the miter. The miter is a great joint, but it doesn't have a lot of strength if you whack it. So the splines really hold it together and give it a little bit of extra strength. Made tool, very fancy one as you can see. Just a piece of 2x4, and I cranked my blade to 45 degrees, ran it across, made this trench, which is basically a right angle turned on its side. In this case, the sides of the box and the lid of the box. So this is going to run through right up against the fence. A little demonstration in advance. The box is going to fit in like that. And we're going to set the blade at just the right height to cut in, but not to cut through. And we set the depth of our splines. I like to put them a little bit down from the bottom, not too far. It's a visual, it's kind of a design feature. You can have them close and you can separate them by a lot, you can separate them by a little, you can put in two or three or four, you can put in two in the top and two in the bottom. You can have some fun with it. You can have them different thicknesses so they make a pattern. It, it can be a design feature as well as a construction feature. Now we're going to do the same process for the lid. I generally put the spline sort of towards the bottom. So we've got these cut out now. And I've milled up some stock that's going to go in those holes. We'll just slip the pieces in like that. I'll then take a pencil and stick it in where it's going to be. And then just make a mark. Again, it's rough. I'm going to cut these out on a scroll saw, and these are going to be the individual splines. So you want to leave yourself room. You don't want any overlapping lines. So now we're going to take all these bits, and we're going to go over to the scroll saw, and we're going to cut these out so that they're individual pieces, and then we're going to go into the workbench, and we're going to glue them in. For this procedure, I use good old just white glue, woodworker's white glue. Here's our splines, carefully fit, and I do them one at a time because the last thing you want is to have something dry and get it halfway in and stuck and you can't get it back out because that pretty much ruins the entire piece. So, first I take the piece and I insert this here and I paint the inside faces. And I try to get a little bit of glue everywhere. Of course it's going to squeeze through, but I want to get every surface painted so that it's got good adhesion. And then same thing here, just paint a very thin, if you can see, it's not whole gobs of glue, it's just enough to cover the surface. You don't want to starve the joint, but you don't want to be wasting glue either. And then you simply fit this in and push it in. Now I go right up against my little plywood bench here and I give it a little bit of push with my body just to make sure that that's really snug in there. So now we got the lid done, we're going to do the same process for the splines that are on the box itself. So it's exactly the same thing. Slip the paddle in, fit it in, and snug it. And you can see a little bit of glue squirts out the edges when you snug it up. When we're done, we're going to clean everything off with a very uh, rough grit disc sander. So there's a little bit of glue dribb dribbling around. We're not going to worry. Okay, so now we're at the belt sander. This is a 6x48, pretty common woodworking tool. Uh, we're going to be working with a 120 grit belt. And uh, Basically, we're going to leave the box square. We're just going to smooth off all the faces.
We're still going to do a finished sanding pass. I go to 220 grit next and then 400 generally, sometimes to 600 depending on the piece. And here's the very last step of the process. <clears throat> We've taken it from the disc to the 120 grit belt and I've already done the 220 grit so this is the 400 grit which is going to be the final finish on this box. All right, now we've done the hard work building our box, and now this is the fun part where you get to put the finish on and see what the thing's really going to look like. And the first thing we're going to do is use some of this Danish oil called Watco. This is a natural finish, I mean, natural color, meaning no stain. I believe it's a tongue oil based finish with some solvent in it, I'm not sure, but it's a it's the one I've always used, so a certain amount of habit in all this stuff. So now comes the part where you take your rather bland looking wood and it turns into a magically different thing. And I can see how the wood is absorbing that oil so it takes a little bit of application. And this is not the final finish, this just seals the grain. So again, you can see what it does, it really brings out the color of the wood. And if you haven't been able to see the grain before, you certainly can now. So after uh, the Watco goes on, I wipe it right back off, it just stays on for a minute, seals the grain a little bit. And then I go back to my beeswax and paint it on. And this will be the finest fin final finish. And I'll get a good, again, not a thick, wasteful coat, but just enough so that it's all, everything's covered. You don't want the grain to soak it all up. You want a little wax left over on top because it's going to dry and harden, and that's going to be the actual finish of the box. So that'll dry for an hour or two, and then get buffed down, and that'll be our finished product. And that concludes today's episode of Woodworks. Thank you for joining us, and in particular, thank you to Timothy Lidgate for sharing some of the secrets, <laughs> tips and hints that you've learned over the many years of experience you've had making boxes. Well, thank you. It was a really interesting episode, Timothy. Thanks Glad once again. I enjoyed it. Thank you, everybody, and join us next time. Yeah.